YouTube, it's your boy Ken with the Anchor Reef. I want to take a few minutes to uh, to apologize to my fan base. I know I've been sounding a little down and out, dealing with a little heartbreak right now around this time of year. But uh, as my grandma would tell me, the show must go on. And uh, we finna do just that, because I got something for you. I know y'all hear that sound in the background, it's making a whole bunch of noise. It's water running. Cause uh, yeah. We're getting ready to push some water into the 75 gallon. By the time we get ready to get this reef moved over. And uh, I got a few more things that I'm working on. Projects happening down here. Of course, we got us a stand for the sun. Making another little cabinet for all my other accessories. Like I say, I do a lot of this out of scrap wood, but as you see, we're getting some water in here just to uh, test fill, make sure the stand gonna hold it. And uh, then I'll be setting up plumbing and getting everything wired in, change out all this water, and we'll mix up some salt water. Like I say, I've already uh, test filled the tank, put some water in it, and uh, made sure it was gonna hold, drain most of it out. And now I've got my, uh, my water in here that I'm about to turn into salt water. Once again, remember, the only time you mix salt in an aquarium is if there's nothing in it. No rocks, no decorations, no absolutely nothing, no sand, nothing. Once again, the uh, the water's not all the way up to the top of the overflow back there either. So we can't get salt stuck back there, none of that. I'll put a power head in here just to kind of help blow the salt around and we're going to help dissolve it. We got it about, I don't know, maybe three quarters of the way full. We're not going to fill it all the way up because when we do get ready to mix this salt, this is the only time you should mix salt in an aquarium. If not, you need to mix it outside of an aquarium in a separate container so that the salt fully dissolves. You notice that it's not all the way up to the top of the overflow there. Still got it good, I don't know four or five inches from the bottom of the overflow here. Put me a power head in here. We're gonna get a, uh, gonna get some salt mixed in here. I'll definitely peel the stick off. It's time for it to go. So I'll work on that here in a second. But uh, other than that, it's about to be time to move that tank over into that tank. I know my coral is going to be happy, get them a chance to spray it out, open up some more. And uh, we're going to make it happen. I got to finish putting another light on this side. Got that one on that side. I'm waiting on some new bulbs to come. Like I say, still got to get down here, finish up with the sump. Also, you know, make our hook accessories like the same wood that you're using when you make your scrap. It don't, it don't take much just to cut down a couple pieces and uh, make your utensil hold up. Uh, one for your nets and your hooks and all that though. But progress is being made and it's finna come together. How to set up your salt water tank, how to transfer your tank, it's all the same deal. Just take your time, do it slow. That's really what's been taking me so long. I don't want to start making changes to this tank once I get everything moved and set up. I want to sit back, I want to enjoy it, and that be the end of it. So uh, now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get ready to mix up some water to go in that tank right there. The only LEDs that will be in this tank will be blue. Everything else will be under T5 light. I don't know how well you can see that white residue up underneath these attendant lights and through these bubbles on the bottom of the tank there. But that's salt residue. And that's why I say that you should never mix any salt inside of the tank unless it is completely empty. Because that residue right there will dissolve over the next 24 hours. Yet, it will also raise your salinity depending on how much it is and where it's stuck so that's why we do it in an empty tank or in an empty container to pour into the tank 
so that all salt is dissolved thoroughly create so it doesn't create swings in your salinity we got just about all the accessories done I just need to cut the face plates for this here uh, cabinet that'll hold all my salt down at the bottom and then all my other stuff up on the shelves and whatnot and then uh, we'll get that finished up but of course the weather's taking a turn for the worse and it's supposed to snow again in Texas yeah, I've actually uh, had the water in the tank about 24 hours. Uh, been a real busy couple of days, last few days at work. So here we are, New Year's Eve morning. Happy New Year to everybody. But uh, we're getting ready to uh, start adding rock to this tank, which if y'all remember when I did my rock selection video, I had built a couple rocks. So those are already sitting there. Salt water just been sitting there uh, curing. That's pretty much what it is. When we cure rocks, we sit them in salt water, allow them to uh, get established. I'm gonna start pulling sand out of this one. Got another bag of sand just to add with it. Make sure we're using live sand. All that other play sand and other different sands, they just contain too many silicates. But, uh, yeah, we about to start moving some stuff. This is why we do things slowly, though. Because you can take time to uh, let your water sit, let your rocks cure, while you're still planning and getting set up for the things that you want inside your fish tank. And that way you can let it get established correctly. A few uh, rocks in here right now. I'm also working on building another one. Still a few in the tank. And of course we got the other ones down here that I will be using to uh, to finish building the rock. This container here actually is uh, about six cups of tank water and a third of a cup of hydrogen peroxide. And if you can see them bristle worms and all that other gunk and junk, that's what come out of the rocks. And I use that to actually clean a few of them before I got ready to move them into the new tank just because I'm letting everything just kind of get established and get ready to go into new conditions what's going on now this is actually uh, day two of uh, first part of this move I actually uh, ended up building another rock last night out of some rocks I had cured just to try to maximize my rock volume in a minimum amount of space uh, it's really what I've been trying to do with this tank the whole way through it try to get the most with the less uh, in this instance less is going to be more for me seeing as how I'm going to need so much room for all these different corals uh, the fish that I already have I got probably two more on the list that I do plan on adding to this tank but uh, that'll be a, a lot further down the line right now it's just getting these rocks moved which I've showed you my hydrogen peroxide dip I did dip all my rocks before moving them over about 10 to 12 minutes as long as it's just the rocks corals for about six minutes seven minutes and those have only been the uh green star polyps my zoas those really been the only ones that have been dipped and moved so far because they are a little bit harder and can stand up without me of course having to feel to anything on there like that plan on moving the sump here in a little bit get that drained out get it moved over to the new tank and then I'm just going to use a regular tank to run this one until I finally get all my fish and corals and everything up out of there. You run into a little hiccup. I'm actually kind of fond of that bare bottom look right now. But then at the same time, I got a dilemma. Because my boy Professor, I'm actually back there right now swimming around. He is a sand sifting goby. So guess what he needs? in the tank, sand, of course. I do have a new bag, I do still have the old sand, which I'm gonna mix together and put in the new tank. But this also goes to show that you make sure you do your research on how you wanna do your tank. I probably could've got away with a bare bottom tank had I not been trying to provide the best absolute environment for Professor and the rest of the crew in there. 
So we're going to put some sand in this tank. And I'm going to be happy with it. I don't have a problem with having sand in my tank. Not at all. Just a new look. And that's what I was after. Something new. New year, new things. Enjoy your reef. As you see, most of uh, the rock and the coral have been added to the tank. And I've kind of still up in the air on this sand issue. The only reason I do need sand is because Professor, whom is a sand sifting goby, needs sand to sift, obviously. So to give him the best habitat possible would be my main reason to go with sand. But if I choose not to, because I'm really, really feeling this bare bottom look, it'll just be a very, very minimal amount of sand. Just enough for him to sift, get in his gills, blow around. But I'm not even going to have nearly as much sand as I had in here. But uh, the fish will stay in this tank tonight. This one will stay running up and moving. I've got most of the coral in here still playing around with where I want to mount them. Because like I say, once I do this one time, it's going to be the end of it. Um, play with the aquascape a little bit, but I'm really trying to leave as much room as possible and still uh, maximize my space. This all put together. All fish and invertebrates have been transferred safely. Except for Larry the Lobster, he uh, he lost a claw in the old tank last night. And then this morning I saw that he had lost his other one. But I do believe they will both grow back. So, there it is. If you like what I'm doing here, you like what you're seeing, definitely hit that subscribe button. Go and leave a comment down at the bottom if you got questions on any of this that I'm doing. And uh, if you like what I'm doing, definitely hit that like button. You know what I'm saying? Don't be afraid to hit these buttons. They help us know that the content we put out is beneficial to you. So uh, don't be afraid to use stuff like that. You know what I mean? Nobody going to contact you. We're not going to send no solicitors to you. Nothing like that. Just knowing that we're doing what we're supposed to be doing, helping the people. Enjoy your reef.